Episode 40. Ha. Can someone tell me why Adam Sandler is still doing the dumb man-child bit when he can actually act? Oh, someone watched Hubie Halloween. Yeah, I did. Because I was like, hey, it's Halloween season. Let's watch something that takes place during Halloween. So instead of watching Halloween for the 70th time, I figured let's see what Adam Sandler can bring to the Halloween candy table. It's my favorite movie of the year. And there's the problem. Adam Sandler was excellent in Uncut Gems, Punch Drunk Love. I mean, even The Wedding Singer was pretty good. The Cobbler. But, but for some reason, everyone wants him to go back to his man-child, waterboy type bullshit that is so worn out it can make Jerry Lewis cringe. Well, I mean, he's sort of the Jerry Lewis of the 90s, isn't he? Like, sort of like, I lady, you know, and all annoying and all that. But, you know, endearing in a kind of a weird way. Yeah, and I get that. But for my personal taste in comedy, I kind of expect more than baby speak from a grown man and fall flat slapstick. I love Kubi. It, you know, it just pisses me off. You know, especially when I know someone has a broader spectrum of acting, but they keep getting typecast into inane, annoying shit all the time. Yeah, I mean, the writing wasn't even that great either. I mean, it, it was like even bad for an Adam Sandler film from the 90s. I'm gonna get a tattoo on my fur of Adam Sandler in a jack-o'-lantern on my tail! Which will just grow out in about a week. Well, I mean, Adam Sandler can kind of do what he wants, right? I mean, he's in that position now where it's like, you know, Hey, I'm just gonna make something stupid and somebody's gonna give me a bunch of money! Kind of the dream, isn't it? I guess, and that's great for Adam Sandler, but I'm more concerned about the audience. You know, the ones that have to deal with the results of the I have so much money I can do whatever I want type of filmmaking. You know, a lot of people do love Adam Sandler. I like Adam Sandler when he's not doing the man-child bit. I mean, it's old. It's like slipping on a banana peel type old. He was good in The Cobbler and The Wedding Singer. Both had a good balance of comedic chops and actual acting. Why can't he do that? Well, I mean, do you think maybe your ball for comedy is just like way too high in your mind? You grew up with reruns of like Faulty Towers on PBS and, you know, George Carlin kind of comedy things which were like super intelligent and insightful, you know, I mean, it's, and all that, right? Yeah, and I'm like, how the fuck can no one put together a decent show like Faulty Towers again? It was fucking 12 episodes and it's like 50 years old. Yep, we in England are spot on with humor. Yep, funniest people on the planet. Yeah. Not all of them. I've watched Benny Hill, okay? If it wasn't for the half-naked women running around in high speed all the time, nobody would watch that show, okay? But, you know what, there are, there are good shows like IT Crowd, Black Books, you know, stuff like that is great. Look, have you noticed, though, all the mentioned shows that you like tend to have really intelligent people who are extremely sarcastic? Yeah, sarcasm is a form of intelligence, so I appreciate it. I don't know, it is true. Speaking of unintelligence, the NBA 2K franchise apparently implemented non-skippable in-game ads for the NBA 2K21 game. Oi, didn't EA do that with UFC 4? Like, there were these tiny little ads that popped in and out, like, in between replays. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Here, people pay a full $60 for a game, which probably has day one DLC on top of that cost, then a month after its release, after everyone bought it, they start slipping in little in-game ads. Now, here's my thing. When gaming inevitably becomes a streaming-only thing, and it will, what's to stop gamers from having to put up with in-game ads running every 10 minutes while they're trying to play a fucking game? Well, I mean, that's kind of a bleak outlook for gaming, isn't it? Well, okay, historically, cable TV, decades ago, was basically TV you paid for that was ad-free. As the years went by, they slowly started playing ads before and after movies or shows. Then slowly started peppering ads throughout actual shows. And before anyone realized it, we were paying for a type of television that used to be free. Oh, snappy! That was true! Now, gaming has already an ad-supported model when it comes to a lot of mobile games. With Amazon's Luna, Google Stadia, and Microsoft's Xbox xCloud thing, all vying to be the Netflix of gaming, what's to say, slowly? They start rolling out an ad before your game loads up. You know, giving the excuse that it helps preload data so your game runs smoother. 
and then they start implementing them on pause screens, then inventory screens, and then, before you know it, Geralt is running around with a Red Bull backpack. No! Geralt is OP as it is! Energy drinks need to be nerfed! Yeah, well, that's when I'll stop playing games, mate. All right. Dude, if they made an ad-supported Senron Kagura game that was free, and all the ads were, you know, for Senron Kagura or similar type merch or whatever, you wouldn't be all on that? Well, well, I mean, maybe. But even I have standards, mate. You know, there's no point in being immersed in gameplay if an ad is going to pull me out of it every five minutes, you know? I mean, it's kind of why I don't play mobile, you know? Free-to-play model and all that. It's wank, isn't it? Except Genshin Impact. That game is actually fun! You know, it's like free-to-play, anime meets Breath of the Wild type thing. And, you know, honestly, so far, I haven't had any real paywalls keep me out of the, you know, playing the game. I've just been wandering around, opening up treasure, you know, beating down some enemies, doing daily quests. Well, you don't mind the grind, so a game like that's model is really focused on impatient people who just want shit now, you know? Gotta level up everything real fast so I can say that I'm top tier. Oh, mate, I will wait years to unlock something. No fucks given. Oh, I'm, I'm, like, honestly, I'm really patient. I waited a full year for one costume pack for Senron Kagura's Peach Peach Splash to go on sale. It was $1.99. So you know what? Good on me. I got a good deal. Yeah, you're a frugal one. Ads and games make me sad. United with a frying pan to the skull of gratitude. Yeah, it's it's just a shitty state of things. Like, I don't get it. I mean, what the hell is everyone trying to sell that's so damn important anyway? Like what? Toilet paper? Shoes? What the fuck? I mean, who needs all this superfluous bullshit? Well, I mean, I kind of like merch, though. Yeah, I like merch, too. Like, I'll buy shirts and shit, you know, even though I don't wear people clothes. Shirts make cool blankets I can hide in and peek out of the little holes to survey my food situation or people locations. It's like a fabric jungle gym for squirrels. You know, shirts are fun. You know, they're, just, they're nice and cozy, you know, in the winter and all that, but, you know, panties, not so much. You know, there's not a lot you can hide around in, and it's, you know, as winter, winter cover-up goes, it's like trying to wrap yourself around in a piece of dental floss. You know, it's, it's really not comfortable. You are so weird. Dude, you are so weird. Oh, yeah, like you never wanted to hang out in Jermaine's knicker bin. Uh, no. I don't even like being in the same house as her, much less being near anything that has been physically on her. Yeah, her depression does not make for consistent bathing routines. Did you know? This new voice upgrade doesn't feel like an upgrade. Hey! Sorry. This is just very awkward for me. Oh, I did get to listen to some actual music. Oh, do tell. Well, it's not J-pop, so you probably won't have an interest. Oh, you know, you know, mate. I do listen to mostly metal and punk, alright? You know, I mean, bandmade and baby metal, they're like, kind of actually out of the norm for me. But I really like them. Yeah, I really don't care, okay? So, listen. The Hive came out with a live album recorded at Third Man Records months before the whole pandemic thing blew up. So, that was pretty cool. Um, that Liam Gallagher guy from Oasis came out with an album which Pillsy, hi, which he talked about. But, he also released an MTV Unplugged album, which, frankly, I didn't even think... MTV Unplugged was still a thing, you know, since I unplugged MTV in, like, 2001, all right? Also, oddly enough, Pearl Jam came out with an official MTV Unplugged album, um, I think on the 23rd of October, which only took, like, 30 years, you know, and as 90s rock bands go, they were probably one of the best for a little while. Um, uh, but, yo, their MTV Unplugged performance from back then was actually impressive. Usually, you don't get that amount of angst with a bunch of dudes and acoustic guitars. Definitely worth a watch or listen if you can find it. And speaking of angry guys with guitars, Bob Mould. Oh, the Who's Can Do guy. Oh, I remember. See, post-punk band from Minneapolis in the 80s. It's not all baby metal and chocolate up in my brain, mate. I know things. Yeah, that guy. Anyway, he also came out with an album which is surprisingly angsty. Yeah, the dude has always been kind of pissed, but instead of being pissed at himself this time around, he's kind of reversed focus on the state of the world. I haven't heard this guy so raw since, like, Zen Arcade. Alright, okay. Maybe not that raw, but there's definitely echoes you can pick up on in the performances from ye olden Husker Do days. Well, I mean, it's, it's, the album's kind of a political thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a state of the world kind of thing, but, you know, even in his Husker Do days, he always dabbled in politics, so... And generally, I tend to not listen to a lot of politics when it comes to music, unless it's Rage Against the Machine or Bad Religion, and mostly Bad Religion because they're actually educated. Um, the I mean, says the God from Rage Against the Machine. Yes, I know, they're both highly educated in the world of politics. Anyway, 
It was just an odd collection of remember the 90s types of releases this month. You know, I mean, you literally had, what, basically Oasis, Pearl Jam, The Hives, and Bob Mould. It's like all these people were kind of big in the 90s. Or at least they're still around. Appreciate them while they're around. Other than that, uh, let's see, Apple TV apparently bought all the rights to the Charlie Brown holiday specials, so It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown won't air on network television for the first time since, like, the 60s. Proving that, once again, the few American traditions we have, as trite as they may seem, are easily bought up by large corporations who don't really give a shit. By physical media, folks. I did, and I can watch It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown anytime I fucking want. Middle of July? Great Pumpkin. March 13th? Great Pumpkin. The 11th of January? It's the Great Pumpkin. Arbor Day? Great Pumpkin. It's sad when the world buys you man movies and then holds them away from you, holding it ransom. Yeah, Mike, this whole digital age thing, um, it's kind of shit, isn't it? I mean, it's like... We don't really own anything anymore. It's just like we're perpetually renting forever. I mean, see, this is what I buy things. Like, I have some vinyl records, and I got CDs, and I got my DVDs, and I got my Blu-rays, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's, at least I own it. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, it's leaving Netflix on the first of... I don't care. Because it's mine. It's in my collection, mate. Yeah, basically, if there's anything I really care about, I buy it. I buy a physical format if it's available. And if it's not, I find alternatives. <laughs> That's all right. Josie! What? I may need you to be on standby for the new series we're working on. Great. More unpaid work, too, though. How I love it, so... All you have to do is read some text, okay? It's not like that's gonna be a big issue for you. Whatever. I'm not reading anything until I get my old voice back. Anyway, we're prepping for Halloween in the real world. And on October 28th, for patrons on Patreon, we are going to give out a video book combo of... A little Halloween for everyone on Patreon. So that's going to be probably around 7 o'clock Eastern, October 28th on Patreon. It's going to be a digital book and video you can just download. You know, it's literally a Halloween special. Yeah, it's not on network TV, but you know what? You can watch it now whenever the fuck you want. Oi, we're just giving things away now. I thought we should be promoting. Well, one, we're giving it out to patrons who have been supporting us this whole time. Thank you. And, dude, honestly, Halloween is gonna suck this year for a lot of people. So, why not spread the spooky vibes far and wide so those who can't really celebrate Halloween can have access to at least one Halloween special? And don't worry, if you're not a patron, just search for A Little Halloween Pumpkin Guy on YouTube, Twitch, or Amazon. Yes, it's actually on Amazon Prime Video. You can watch it there if you like. I think we got a penny or something, so, you know, that helps. I am going to buy a penny fish candy with that penny, so thank you. Good good for you. Um, So, yeah, I just, we try to give it to patrons every year for those who might have missed it, but this year it's kind of like, dude, just try to have a good Halloween, you know, and I, I think even though the special is like four years old at this point, now more than ever, I do think we're going to need a little Halloween, okay? So, everybody. Get your candy, cue up your movies, be spooky, stay away from people, and try to have a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! Yes, happy candy day! Happy Halloween! Happy Happy Halloween. You can be consuming human fields. (sighs) Thanks, Josie. De nada. Oh, great. Now you habla español. Fix it, por favor.